no matter what you hear, and you may say, I don't believe that. I don't believe that that's true. It does not matter anymore. It does not matter anymore. It does not matter if it's real or not, or true or false. It does not matter because if they can get you believe it, wait, wait, not you, not even the majority. If they get just a few people to believe it, everything changes and then everything goes into full-blown panic. Now, what am I talking about? Today, let's talk about restrictions and lockdowns that are happening all because just a few people are warning about something. And remember, it does not matter if you believe it, but it matters who is setting policy. And if they believe it or want to make people to believe it, then it all changes. Let's jump into today's story. This is again, mind blowing to me. And it's one of those things that we've, we've ventured and talked about and we knew it was coming for 2024, but now it's here. Let's jump into it. Today's video starts right now. Hey guys, welcome to the Max. Thank you so very much for being here today. If you are new to the channel, go down here, press subscribe, ring the bell, give us a thumbs up or a thumbs down. That's okay. Just let us know what you think about the content of today's video. Remember, follow me on Twitter. We're going to be doing a major giveaway from one of our sponsors of our videos. We're going to be releasing that on the end of the month. So you have plenty of time. Go check me out on Twitter or X because I post a lot of things. And I and I also, the, the things I talk about in here, I push on Twitter so that way you can see the in-depth story so you can read a little bit more about what we're hearing. Now, so today's video, hey, before we talk about today's video, have you enjoyed the beauty of spring? Are you enjoying the spring? We had a ton of storms yesterday and there's nothing prettier than going outside. So make sure you are going outside and enjoying the time, walking, running, drinking a cup of coffee on the porch, whatever it may be to enjoy and relax because we live in a chaotic world and you need to enjoy that before we just always dive into some of these crazy stories. Now on to the story. So today we're gonna to be talking about the avian flu again. Now the reason I wanna bring it up is because there's been another state, seven states now, seven states has seen this happen. Does this not remind you of the playbook of March 2020? I mean, I'm just telling you, just think about what is happening with 19 and 20 and you're almost seeing it again with 24. So it plays into two things. The spread of the avian flu is now into cattle and it's, we're seeing restrictions and lockdowns on those farms, meaning no movement of animals to be done. Remember, the way that cattle, chicken, all these farms make it is by maneuvering animals to sell, to harvest, to feed our families and, and you know the people of the world or to sell to other farms and they barter, they buy and trade. That's how they make money. That's how they operate their business. They're selling their goods or their livestock. Well, what they're doing is they're suppressing that for the reason of this sickness. Now, here's the thing. I wanna stop right now because I'm gonna get tons of people saying, well, I don't believe in this. It's just another scare tactic. Okay, what did I say when we started this video? It doesn't matter if it's real or not. The last one we dealt with locked down the world and changed everything, changed our whole economy for 1% mortality rate, or actually less than 1% mortality rate. So when we talk about something being true or false, something being real or not, it does not matter. What matters is this, not even that 60, 70% of the individuals don't believe it. What matters is if they can convince enough people to believe it, and if they can convince enough state leadership, which if they stand with the opposition party, of course, they're gonna believe it. They can change the world. It does not need people to actually believe it or it doesn't even need it to be real. They need the fear or the politics for it to be real. They, they know people like California and New York's gonna go for it. Now here's the thing, they're not worried about those states. They're not even looking at red states. If they can convince enough people in some of the states like Michigan, some of the states like Ohio, some of the states like Pennsylvania, Arizona, New Mexico, Nevada, some of what we call the battleground states, if just a few people in leadership believe this could be very serious, it could change the whole way of life and also the outlook for 2024. And that's why I wanna go back to the story. It, 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 I wanna read this because we need to prepare because when things like this happens, it, the speculation means fuel goes up, livestock goes up, prices of goods goes up, the food system goes up, it's broken. It makes us have more control in our life because there's more things getting passed down. That's why I wanna bring attention to the story. 
the fact that it's real or not does not matter. It depends on what they want the story to say and how many people believe it or the powers that be believe it. Remember, mail-in voting, uh, things like uh, locking down, all that is done on the top level of the states. It's not really the fact of a president or someone else doing it in national news is the fact that your state can do it and if your state changes those policies it can affect everything but let's go to the story on the new state and what they're actually doing with this cattle and why it's important for us to know because here we are again looking at the same playbook that will work again because there's still today there's still people wearing face coverings still today from 2020 for something less than one percent on affecting of true mortality rates now Avian flu found in seventh state as cattle restrictions, listen, that restrictions grow. North Carolina authorities on April 10th reported that the cows in the state tested positive. Again, here I am thinking, why are we allowing people on our farm to test our animals? Do you think that's a bad policy? I do. I don't understand why we're allowing these animals to be tested. And if so, if your farm depends on that regulation, which if they're selling outside, that could be the possibility. But the problem is if the agricultural company comes in or the private company comes in that is tied to the government or the government comes in, it, if they have a biases, why do you think that they're going to be as honest as they can be? And if there's nothing wrong with your farm, I would venture to say, why are you even here? If I don't report a problem or there's something that I need to worry about, I can deal with it here without having to get in the government and involved. We have spent years developing methods to handle this in poultry, but now this is new. So now we're having to work with state and federal law to see if we can develop protocols to, de to, to handle this situation. That's what a state agricultural commissioner said, Steve Troxler from North Carolina. So now because of this, the states are getting the federal government involved because this is unprecedented. Did you hear what he said? We're having to develop new protocols to handle this situation. He noted that according to the U.S. Food and Drug Administration, there is no concern of safety of the milk as long as it's pasteurized. Now, we drink raw milk, but I'm just saying they're saying there's no warning to it. If there's no warning to it, why are they locking these cows down? If there's no warning to the egg population, why are they killing all these chickens? See, here, here's where you get to the story where it does not matter if it's something that's dangerous or not. Because if they can build enough skepticism, hey, we just, you know, we, we talked about getting rid of these cows anyway. Why don't we just get rid of them? We talked about, you know, the prices of food going up and we're wanting to develop, you know, a 3D printed meat, which is real, people. Well, th this is the perfect opportunity. See, do you, what, why, we're trying to get people off this cow milk because these cows are killing the earth. We need more almond milk and soy milk because we can develop, you know, GMO soy and it provides everything that we can need and we can keep the environment safe. We hear these talking points. Remember, it does not matter if the outbreak is real or not. What matters is the skepticism and also now the regulation behind it could restrict. It can quarantine. It can shut down those operations to where then it's full-blown problems. And the full-blown problems then goes to the state and federal level when they can set new policies and new regulations. Follow how that runs. Follow how that works. Avia influenza cases in cattle first appeared in the United States in March. March, isn't that funny? Uh, what happened in March 2020? Stephanie Langle, an assistant professor for Case Western Reserve University School of Medicine, said on social media that because the influenza is not a reportable disease in cows, it's likely that the outbreak is way larger than currently represented. USDA officials do not require testing. However, now they're starting to recommend testing. So something that could have been just a normal, you know, day in the life of a cow, they may have a little cough and get over it, now, since we're having to aggressively test, well, all of a sudden, if we aggressively test, then we aggressively find. When we aggressively find, then that allows for those, those um, policies of restrictions and movement of animals to stop. Well, what does that do? Think about that, people. Think about your food system. Have you priced beef or chicken lately? It's crazy what it costs you. It's like 25 to 45% more, depending on what cuts you're buying. But if we all of a sudden restrict it more, or we hurt the population, the supply and demand, and we, we take the supply down, the demand goes up, that means the price goes up, you think it's gonna get any cheaper? The strain is circulating 
is H5N1. It originates in birds, dead birds found on people's farms, and it has been confirmed in these cases. Now, don't you listen to this. This is, this is the important part. Since the virus has not acquired a mutation that facilitates transmission among humans based on the available information, the WHO assesses the public health risk to general populations to pose this virus as low right now, and the risk of infection is very low to moderate. The WHO also noted that there is no vaccine currently for the H5M1 for humans. Officials recommend people not to get close to dead animals or animal droppings that can, or, or not to consume raw milk or raw cheese. You hear that? It's played on through the food system right here. Restrictions due to the positive test from cattle in North Carolina. Officials joining a growing number of states in restricting the movement of cows. When people sell cows here in Mississippi, they don't stay in Mississippi. They go to stockyards all over America. Now, I don't believe in stockyards. I've told you that before, but that is the nature of what we do to feed America is that these farms depend on those getting bought at the stockyard to then get sent out of here. Cattle right now is at an all time high. If all of a sudden, you know, the, the population starts getting, uh, you know, taken out or restricted, that means the good population or quote unquote good cattle is going to skyrocket. And then all of a sudden, after all that, the market's going to fall out. And so it's going to destroy the farmer. Either they're not going to have a herd, their herd is going to be sick, quote unquote sick, or they're not going to have a herd anymore because they sold everything because of the price uh, in the market at that time. The movement of cattle herds are confirmed cases in other states in North Carolina has been suspended, meaning they're not moving cattle across state lines. 17 other states have also placed restrictions on cattle imports across the states. Maryland is now joining the list. Do you hear what I'm saying? Remember, it's not the fact that 50 states believe in it. It's not the fact that 50% of the population believes in it. If a few states um, change policy, and they say, we're going to restrict this, or we're going to change this, or we're going to quarantine here, or we're going to allow uh, the food system be, to be broken here, it's going to make a, a basically American-wide problem and a chaos situation, very much of a crisis. Several states have said that sick cattle have come from Texas, and that's where the first cases have been detected. Now, 21 herds have been tested and have been considered positive. If cattle must be moved, we strongly encourage extreme diligence by producers, veterinarians, and animal health officials to get them safe and make sure they have certificates to cross the state lines. So now, new policies, new regulations, new licensures that we're going to have to have. We're going to involve more vets on farms, more uh, state officials on farms. It's a control? Maybe. Is it a fear? Maybe. Is it all just for 2024 elections? Maybe. As I stated in the first part, I hate to beat a dead horse, <laughs> but it does not matter if it's true. It does not matter if the outbreak is spreading, if it's dangerous, or if it's just a common cold. It does not matter. What matters if they can make enough skepticism, they can make enough restrictions, they can make enough new policies, they can make enough new public interest for this situation, then they can change everything about how you eat, the flow of your economy, such as agriculture, the fact of restrictions. Maybe all of a sudden we need new we need new things in the arm now. I mean, geez, we're, we have no safety protocol against this. Does not matter how dangerous or not it is, but if they can make you believe, they can make just a few people believe, they can change the outcome of anything. I will say this, I gotta give leftists, um, the Uniparty, uh, the agenda pushers, the global people, I've, I've gotta give them kudos. I gotta give them props because they know how to do what they're doing. They know how to market it. They know how to manipulate you. And they're very good at their job. I mean, look, I mean, we have Mike Johnson as speaker and we thought he was gonna be a conservative and he is bending and, 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 and basically doing whatever and whatever they tell him to do, he's doing. It's absolutely ridiculous that only 17 or 18 people did not want extra surveillance on us from our Congress on the conservative side. Now, we're not talking about that today, but what I'm saying is it shows the power that this, this group of individuals have. They do not need the population. They just need the ones who actually set policy over the population. We've dug ourselves in a major hole in America where we've relied on all these agencies, all these people, all these politicians to set policy, to quote unquote keep us safe. 
all the while, you, the deeper we dig a hole, how safe is that hole? You think about it. When we dig ponds or when we dig holes, we are now looking at the sides. What if that all of a sudden starts caving in? I think that's where we're at in America. Our dollar's falling. I mean, the gold is skyrocketing because that shows the, the economy's struggling. The inflation is not going down. Your government's still printing money. We have wars across the world. Now all of a sudden we're dealing with outbreaks or the skepticism of outbreaks. It, it's, it's caving in. So the reason we talk about this is not because I want you to believe of the outbreak. I want you to take precautions by maybe, like I said yesterday, buying some chicken, buying some beef, learning how to can, learning how to preserve it, learning to buy it now versus later because it's not gonna get any cheaper and it's gonna be harder to get. Our nation needs healing, our nation needs revitalization, our nation needs prayer, and needs revival for sure. But sometimes I just think it just needs people with common sense and wisdom, first of all, just to say, we gotta stop the nonsense. We gotta stop the craziness. And when we learn to stop that, then we'll learn to revitalize what we had. We'll rebuild a phenomenal nation. If we don't, then we're just gonna keep going around the toilet bowl until we go down the drain. We're gonna keep staying in the deep pit until the, the walls start caving in. And it's all because we kind of did it to ourselves. Again, again, what are we doing paying off student loans? What are we doing going into wars? What are we doing printing more money? What are we doing lowering interest rates when we have inflation running amok? What are we doing? This is just another sign that 2024 is gonna throw us into a major loop now because we're dealing with restrictions, lockdowns, and a broken food system. Thank you for watching. Let me know your thoughts on this whole situation. Remember our giveaway that we're gonna be doing on Twitter. Please follow us over there. We share a ton of information over there and we would love to keep sharing it with you. Um, and again, sharing it here. We appreciate you. If you can, just please share our message across this platform. Share with your friends. It does mean the world to us. Guys, thank you for watching. God bless. Have a